Welcome to In The Workshop. This is part two of a diabolical model steam engine. As I commence this assembly, the extent of the damage, build quality and botch repairs to the engine soon becomes apparent. And the news is not very good at all, as can be clearly seen in the video. This engine belongs to a friend of mine called James Evans. James has a YouTube channel and the details are on screen currently. You may be wondering why James Evans' channel is called T's Cottage Guy Productions. What is T's Cottage? Well, it's a pumping station in the northeast of England. And James is a volunteer at the T's Cottage pumping station. And that is where he got this engine from. One of the other volunteers at the pumping station gave it to him. I've cast my experienced eye over this engine and I do know exactly what's wrong with it. The faults are many and varied. I'll go through them one at a time. This part that I'm unscrewing currently is the motion bracket and as you can see it's very loose and both of the crosshead guides are broken. Sadly this is not down to the build quality of the engine. The problem has been caused by somebody putting the engine together incorrectly. And I still don't know what the threads are, they are not BA size and they are not metric. But they're very very close to 5BA so it seems logical to re-thread the holes 5BA to use new fastenings. Temporarily I'm using any 5BA bolts I can find in my box of 5BA bolts that have a slot head. When I finally rebuild the engine I will use brass fixings throughout but this hodgepodge mixture will do for the moment. Look at the state of the screw holding the piston rod into the crosshead. Time now for some live audio in the workshop and this is what I normally sound like when I'm not sat at a desk in front of a very expensive microphone. So I'll rush jobs because I'm, I'm not showing off. I say, look, look how good I am at this. You know, yeah, but, and then I break it off and it's like, oh dear, I've done, yeah. I've done it, you know. Yeah. Normally I speak far too fast and I trip up and stutter all the time. By voicing over the video in separate blocks and doing a lot of editing, that's why my voice sounds the way it does nothing like the live one. I do it this way so that people who are not native English speakers have a chance of actually understanding what I'm saying. Back to the job now and just look at the state of this motion bracket. What a mess. Every fibre of my being is telling me to remake this part from scratch but then it would not be original. This is what is called a very sympathetic restoration. The video footage is running at a quarter of normal speed and you can see all of the parts moving around and the amount of play between the piston rod and the crosshead has to be seen to be believed. This engine was built by students at a school in the northeast of England many years ago and it's not the build quality that's the problem. Whoever put it together didn't quite get it. As far as I can see the gland is the wrong way around. As you can see, it fouls the valve fork, which in turn puts pressure on the motion bracket, and that's why it broke. When James was telling me about this engine on the phone, he said it looked like it was single acting. But alas no, it is definitely a double acting steam engine with a standard slide valve. This part of the engine seems to be quite well made. The small slide valve moves very easily in the steam chest. Or at least it does when the valve fork, which is on the end of the valve rod, is removed from the rest of the linkage. Here you can clearly see that once this linkage is disconnected, I can rotate the flywheel, the piston goes in and out, and the rocker goes back and forth. But the minute you connect it to the valve fork, it all locks solid. I'm going to remove the steam chest from the cylinder to clean up the port face. It's actually quite tight, so I don't think I'll do that right at this moment. I'm also going to make some new studs to fasten the steam chest onto the cylinder casting because the existing bolts were very rusty indeed. In this clip I'm holding the two crosshead guides against the motion bracket. What I will be doing very shortly is cleaning this assembly thoroughly and re-soldering it. With all of these broken bits out of the way the engine's looking better already. The motion bracket was held to the wooden board through two holes in the base plate using wood screws. I'm going to modify this. First of all I'm drilling the holes in the wood a bit deeper and currently I'm using a 1 8 of an inch diameter drill bit. 
and this is tapping size for a 4BA bolt. And here I am threading the base plate 4BA. And I will fit two 4BA bolts which will go through the base plate into the wood. That's the plan for the moment anyway. This could change as I start to rebuild the engine. First of all I thread one side, followed by threading the other side. I've screwed a brass 4BA bolt into the hole nearest to the camera. And once I've threaded the other side, I will remove this bolt and fit the motion bracket. There's no time like the present, and that's just what I'm doing now. I'm not fully tightening the bolts because I'm going to remove them very shortly. I must say though, there is a 95% improvement in the rigidity of the motion bracket. I think it's time to look inside the valve chest. I'm very curious as to what I'll find in here. I want to test the functionality and see if there's any life in the engine. So I fit a brass fitting into the top of the steam chest cover and then a silicone rubber pipe, which is the pipe from my compressor. By rotating the crankshaft into the correct position and moving the valve fork with my hand, the piston does start to move back and forth. Here I'm re-threading the crosshead and the piston rod 4BA. This is not looking good, but it will do for now. As you can see here, the hole in the crosshead is miles too big for the piston rod. The art of this rebuild is making it so when it's finished and runs well, you won't be able to see too much in the way of modifications. Only the fixings will be different, and they will tarnish over time anyway. At this stage, to give James something to do, I asked him to remove the end cylinder cover and take the piston out. The piston was a rattle fit in the cylinder, so once he removed the cover, it was very easy to get it out of the cylinder. This piston uses graphited yarn to create a seal between the piston and the cylinder. That's the general idea, but in this case, there isn't a seal between the piston and the cylinder. The cylinder is the right size, the piston is far too small, and there isn't enough graphited yarn in the groove anyway. I don't think I've ever seen a piston as badly made as this. It's wrong in every way. I'm definitely going to make a new piston, but maybe I should retain the piston rod. I can see that the piston rod is threaded into the piston. Then for some reason it's been soft soldered, I'm not quite sure why. What did I just say about trying to retain the piston rod? Well, looking at the state of this, I really am not sure. I think it would be better to make a new rod and piston, and possibly bush the crosshead to make it the same size as the piston rod. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. The piston fit in the cylinder is an absolute joke. It's really bad, totally unserviceable. If you go down the path of fitting a steam-grade silicone o-ring to the piston, then the piston itself can be slightly smaller than the bore, but not this much smaller. I was curious to see whether a steam-grade silicone piston ring would seal the piston, but unfortunately the groove is too shallow. I need to have another look at this piston. I just cannot believe that anyone, however old or young they may be, can make a piston like this. I really do think it would be a good idea to make a brand new piston rod and a brand new piston. Progress has been made, it shouldn't take too long to get this thing back together and running. I'm going to finish this video with James speaking. And just like my grandson, he does speak at double tempo. It's goodbye from me, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. I'll let James say the last part. I could put the little horrible Kenneth in the background, but I think your camera might, re might reject it. Because it's that horrible. Horrible what? The Kenneth. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.